nanoparticles are exciting, of course, because you can inject them into the body and they can go almost anywhere. Uh, the, the, the challenge is also that they can go almost anywhere. Uh, so uh, there's been a lot of work over the years on uh, mesoporous silica particles, so tiny nanoparticles, let's say 18 nanometers, uh, and you can make them nanoporous so they can actually carry drugs. Um, now, of course, we all know uh, that chemotherapy has its, of course, it's beneficial and that it kills cancer cells, but it also has its uh, famous side effects because it, and that's usually because it goes systemically all around the body. So there's been a lot of work on these nanoparticles that can carry drugs and try and take them only to the cancer cells by targeting rather than um, being systemically all around the body. We've taken a slightly different approach um, in, and we, we, we don't work with uh, conventional drugs. We've tried to use the benefits of, of bio, the properties of bioglass uh, in, in its sort of uh, drug-like properties, if you like. So um, bioglass, as, as it goes in the body, it dissolves and releases ions, and those ions have been found to stimulate certain cells. They're known to stimulate bone cells to produce more bone. There's also been a lot of work in things like um, promotion of angiogenesis, blood vessel growth. Uh, but the, the great thing about a glass is that you can put almost any ion into it. And as the glass dissolves, it will release those ions in their sort of pure ionic form without any um, anions on the other side. So you could release things like calcium without chloride or anything attached to it. Even. Uh, and the rate of the glass degradation determines the rate of ion release. So we created some nanoparticles with, that release different ions. Um, we've concentrated on two um, indications so far. One is cancer and one is osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is, um, is a disease that affects all of us uh, as we age. And, and it's basically the, the loss of bone density. And it's caused by the osteoblasts that lay down bone getting less active over, as we age, but the osteoclasts that remodel our bone, take it away, are still active. And there was a drug on the market um, a few years ago called strontium ranolate, which, which basically was a, an oral drug that you would take and it would release strontium into the body, which, which was found to um, sort of keep the osteoblast active, but also um, slow down the osteoclast activity. Um, so our, uh, but because it was uh, systemic again, there were some worries about side effects. Uh, and it was withdrawn from the market eventually. So we decided to use a nanoparticle to more locally deliver the strontium. So much lower concentrations of strontium are needed. Uh, so it's just parts per million of strontium. So the nanoparticle has got strontium in its glass composition and it, as it dissolves, it releases the strontium ions into the, into the body. And again, our in vitro studies showed that actually when we gave bone marrow, gave these nanoparticles to bone marrow stem cells, they stimulated them to go down the um, osteogenic route. Um, it also, um, when we gave them to immune cells, the macrophages, it actually polarized them into M2 macrophages, which means they're, uh, they're not triggering an inflammatory response as such. They are um, promoting uh, the, um, the regenerative pathway. And uh, then when we gave them in co-culture with osteoblasts and osteoclasts, the osteoblasts were activated and the osteoclasts were, were deactivated slightly. Um, this, um, this is, um, so, and, and because osteoporosis is not like, doesn't tend to be like there's a hole in bone, it's just that it's the lost density. The idea of nanoparticles is that they can get to where they're needed. So if you inject them nearby, they should get to where they're needed. But because they, these nanoparticles don't contain anything dangerous. If they do go somewhere else, um, it shouldn't matter. They just biodegrade um, into silica and strontium. And uh, cancer, cancer treatment was, is a similar idea where instead of strontium, we had zinc. And uh, delivering zinc to cancer cells causes the cancer cells to die, but not kill the healthy cells. And when we gave them to breast cancer cells, we found that actually the more aggressive breast cancer cells died quicker uh, than the less aggressive cancer cells, but they both died much quicker than, um, than the healthy uh, equivalent cells. Uh, 